All right, let's talk about low ejection fraction. So first off, what is the ejection fraction? It's the percentage of blood that is squeezed in systole versus diastole. So if there's 100 mLs at the beginning of a contraction and at the end it's 50 mLs, then the ejection fraction was 50, 50%. And that would be the lower end of normal. Sometimes we can go up to 60, maybe 65%. Anything below that is considered low ejection fraction. 10% would be severely low and 45% would be mildly low. And then in between things like moderate, different terms that the cardiologists use. But most importantly, we wanna figure out why people have low ejection fraction. And that can be things like a heart attack would be a common cause, valvular heart disease, leaky heart valves, tight heart valves, like a aortic stenosis could do it. Other things include radiation, chemotherapy, other pharmaceuticals, uh, statin-induced cardiomyopathy. It could be diabetic cardiomyopathy, sleep apnea. A lot, a lot of things, you know, can do it. Uh, viruses, you know, potentially, uh, and and other uh, injectable sources of that. So that being said. Uh, we fix that with improving eat well, live well, think well, because ultimately not eating well, not living well, not thinking well, that's what leads to cardiomyopathy. So stress-induced cardiomyopathy is known as Takasubo uh, syndrome or broken heart syndrome, and that's from stress. So that being said, we improve heart function, improve ejection fraction through eat well, live well, think well, then we test, don't guess. Other so things like zinc, copper, magnesium, other deficiencies, B vitamin deficiencies that lead to low ejection fraction. So we test, don't guess, evidence-based supplements, biohacking strategies, that's gonna be the key towards improving your ejection fraction on your way to your 100-year heart.